Hi, welcome to episode one of the Pretty Brainy Wife Show. And because it's episode one, we're launching it with the Pretty Brainy Wife. And I thought, what better way to launch off the Pretty Brainy Wife Show on YouTube than to begin with my favorite, favorite topic. So the OGs on Instagram and threads and Facebook and TikTok know that I am in a long distance marriage. I've been in a long distance marriage since 2021 January. So guess what? I have all that tea. <laughs> so anyway, if you're new here, please do click the subscribe button. If you're a regular regular, thank you for coming back. Thank you for being here all these two years, even without content. I really, really actually appreciate you. So let's dive into it. My husband traveled to study and work a bit because we were a young family and we needed to get our lives together. I'd had my first child already and I was pregnant with the second and everything here didn't seem like it was making sense anymore. So we made the unanimous decision that he travels and the plan was that maybe we join him at some point and a lot of those plans changed along the way after I had my second baby and I also got my life together here. So we started to think of ways to make this marriage work even though we are away for a period of time and I know that you might be there and you're saying oh I'm also in a long-distance marriage or oh, I'm in a long-distance relationship I don't know if it will work out or oh, I'm planning to get into a long-distance relationship sit down take your pen take your notebook I'm gonna give you all the notes and all the details on how to survive this number one have a time frame so how long are you going to be gone for what is the plan what are we going to achieve during this period of time that you're away so many people um in uganda where i come from they call it echeyo kube echeyo literally to go and work for a particular period of time um in a country that's foreign then i think the nigerians call it to japa or whatever so you need to know the period of your cheyo or your japa and you've got to know when i'm in this kind of situation is my family going to be able to relocate with me or they're going to stay in my home country and if they're going to stay in my home country how long or if they're going to relocate how long before this actually happens this is what a time frame does for you a time frame helps you to manage expectations okay so if say if you said we're going to be away for a period of six years okay in these six years you're managing expectations after two years someone can be like oh i think i'm tired because in your head you have given yourself um the emotional balance to be able to succeed in these six years so if they are less well and good okay many people also make plans of how to visit each other regularly if that's possible so you need to also have that in mind like the country that this person is going to visit um, are they able to come back? Am I able to visit them? Like, what are the procedures? What are the processes that I need to go through? Do I have um, the legitimacy to be able to do so? Or does he or she have the legitimacy to be able to do so? So it's very important for you to have a time frame in mind and also um, how long is this going to be and how is it going to work? You just can't enter a long distance relationship or marriage just like, okay, you're going to ginger 70 kilometers away bye bye that's so simple but guys if it's to like a different country altogether you need to have a system in place on how it's going to work you need to have a plan number two hmm. technology technology is your friend first time do video calls as much as you can one thing that i have realized over time is that phone conversations and text messages are never enough to read into people's feelings and moods and attitudes so even though you're just working around friendships and work relationships and whatever sometimes someone might text something in a group and you think you interpret it in a really really different way and yet that wasn't the purpose of the person that was writing it so i have learned over time that video calls are the real boss chick for me or real boss guy for him they really really do the job so what happens is every time you're having a sensitive conversation you can read someone's attitude you can read their mood um even if you're on a random plain conversation you can see that someone is unhappy you can see that today they seem a little low and so you know how to navigate it so please don't spare any data don't spare any airtime make sure that you're always doing those video calls they are the real deal if you're in just a relationship and not a marriage you need to distinguish between 
if you see this person in your future or if they were just a fling because it's very important to establish those things before you actually step at the airport yeah if you see this person in your future and you've both discussed and you're like okay so we see each other in each other's futures you're going to treat this like a marriage like a long distance marriage you're going to put in the work the same effort um the same energy because you're seeing this as a long-term relationship i know a lot of people who have broken up you know because the other person is going to travel because they don't see a future together say you've been dating for a while and um this person is like you know what i don't know for how long i'm going to be gone I don't know i don't know if i can trust you to be sane and keep yourself safe while i'm gone so let's just end it maybe we can resume it when you know i come back and usually that never happens guys it never really does happen unless okay there are exceptions to the general rule but it really really never does happen so you need to establish that fact in your head like do if you're just in a relationship do i really want to be with this person do i see this person in my future and then you're going to put in the work to ensure that you keep that relationship alive number four managing feelings so one thing that i've come over time to realize is that feelings are not reality i might feel lonely but in essence i'm actually not lonely i might feel horny but in essence i'm actually not horny like you need to establish the source of those feelings for instance i love rom-coms i am such a big fan of romantic comedies they are the real thing for me but sometimes when you watch those um romantic scenes you sometimes get a feeling of oh i think i'm really lonely i think i really miss my husband or i think i really miss my wife whatever the case might be so you're going to keep away from those things you're going to find the roots of the things that make you get those feelings and approach them right away if it's loneliness and maybe you have a couple of friends that are hanging out without you or whatever and then um you sit at home and realize that you're actually lonely and you're like oh i wish my partner was here then you're going to take away that loneliness you're going to say okay so i need to have more social battery i need to have more social capital to be able to take away this feeling of loneliness so you need to distinguish your feelings from reality because you see these feelings you know what the bible says about these feelings the bible says that if you trust your heart it's gonna lead you in a ditch the heart is where the feelings are so if you're trusting your feelings like oh my god i'm honey i'm honey i'm honey the next guy that texts you or the next girl that texts you you're going to work on those feelings and then you'll end up in an affair if you work on the feelings of say i am lonely the next you might end up in a very poor friendship a very um poor toxic environment because you're looking for a sense of belonging you're looking to have those feelings met so you need to always constantly distinguish your feelings from reality this is what i feel this is what is real how am i going to get these feelings uproot them from you know their source and try to get my life on track another thing is to keep constant communication i might have mentioned a bit of it when i was talking about the videos but now like let's get to the depth of it we really need to keep constant communication what is constant communication all about you're getting into a space where you're telling this person each and everything that you feel each and everything that you're doing each and, like literally each and everything like there was um a, a time about three weeks ago i was out with my girls in a different district altogether and the entire time that we were out at night i was texting my husband and i was telling him about what's happening where we are at taking selfies like the reason that we do that is not because this person um even if you did something wrong they wouldn't know actually but you need to keep holding that cement of trust the person needs to feel like they can trust you at all times regardless okay so that's the reason that you need to keep that constant communication say you're broke be able to communicate that i do not have money so they can know but imagine you say you don't tell your husband that or your wife that you don't have money and then they hear it from another person they think that they can't trust you like how much more are you not telling me that you're telling other people so you need to communicate about everything and anything and please do not even spare the intimate details send those pictures do those sex like whatever keeps the trust alive do it and you know what trust does trust helps to build intimacy you can only be so intimate with someone that you actually trust so imagine 
you're with this person they're far away miles far away and you feel like you can trust them they feel like they can trust you they are more motivated to get back into you know being in a relationship with you other than thinking or feeling other things you know and in some other ways so communicate each and everything clearly feelings anger uh, sadness loneliness um sexual feelings whatever you need to communicate with your partner do that also it helps you not to fall into the trap of speaking about those things with other people which can sometimes lead to emotional affairs which you know go down the slippery slope of sexual affairs and lastly lastly this is my top tip the word if you're watching this and you're not a christian i don't know how to apply it for you but i'm going to apply it for my christian girlies and guys the word you see me i can't hold myself <laughs> it's so hard for you to keep sexually pure except if there is the word and the biggest problem of um long distance relationships and marriages actually is sexual impurity like it's so easy to fall down that, that slippery slope and let me tell you what the word of god does for you the word of god reminds you that you're more than your feelings the word of god reminds you that your loyalty is not just to your partner but to god as well the word of god reminds you that you're more than just a sexual person you're more than just an emotional person that you're bigger bigger than everything and for me the word of god helped me in such a way that it helped me to find a purpose okay it helped me to find purpose in my long distance marriage i realized that i am bigger than just being a wife my husband realized he's bigger than just being a husband because we share these things communication we share these things so we realize that okay so what's your purpose what's my purpose before you married me what was i created for before i married you what were you created for so once you find those things it's easy to work on your individual purpose along the way as you're waiting for your partner to come through there are things that i have done for instance um guys my my instagram og is nil anyway um i've been doing marriage counseling for a year now but that's something i didn't think i was actually good at it i didn't think it was something that i was a natural at until you know my husband left and then i realized that now i'm finding who i am who i am meant to be who i'm created to be and i realized that that was the path that god was leading me to so Keeping in prayer, keeping in the word is going to help you to define certain things. The word of God says that do not push ancient boundaries that your forefathers laid. And for me, I like to interpret it in such a way that don't push boundaries. The word of God helps you not to push boundaries. If you realize you're becoming too friendly to a girl or becoming too friendly to a guy that is not your spouse, let that relationship go. Let that friendship go. You're going to learn to keep your boundaries. The word of God is going to teach you to interpret your emotions in a godly way that even if you see your friends that are a couple and they're kissing it doesn't do anything to you because you know that you have a covenant that is bigger than your feelings so the word of god a hundred percent highly recommend so if you're in a long distance relationship or marriage or you're going to be in one or you know someone that is in one i highly recommend that you save this video and share it with all of your contacts all of your friends help them to be encouraged and to keep firm because sometimes life happens and we need to also happen to life this has been the pretty brainy wife joy kazi i'm so glad that you could be with me all this while don't forget to hit the subscribe button share this with all your contacts until next time i love you god bless you